down for 88 at 460. Who is this? In the original Matrix movie, seeing the same cat twice was a glitch in the system. It was proof that the Matrix was real. Training the cat was both easier and more boring than I thought it would be. It basically involved putting down little piles of treats. The cat barely cared that it had to run through the ceiling. Why didn't we just get two black cats? Okay. Turns out, Glenn in the warehouse has a twin brother that Dwight doesn't know about. Ben. So we threw them in too. This just came for you. Hello? Meet me in the warehouse, but watch out for the men in reception. There's no men, it was... If you take the blue pill, you will stay in the matrix. You will remember none of this. Life will go on as it is for you. If you take the red pill, I will open your eyes and you will see just how deep the rabbit hole goes. I'll take the blue pill. Wait, now the blue will keep you in the program. The red's the cool one. I understand. I'd like the blue pill, please. Well, maybe I didn't explain no, myself Dorothy, clearly if you, you No, to... you were very clear. It's just, God, you know, I really appreciate the work that you and your brother are doing. Appreciate's too small a word, but the timing is terrible right now. They just promoted me to manager, plus I own this building, I run a very substantial farm, and I'm getting married soon to a woman I love. And okay, yeah, maybe that love is just zeros and ones, but I don't want to lose it. No one hates machines more than me. But I'm happy. I'm truly happy. Aww. Are you kidding me? I hired 30 people. <sighs> Morning, Dwight. Who are you? Who am I? I'm Jim. We've been working together for 12 years. <laughs> We're Jug Dwight. You're not Jim. Jim's not Asian. You seriously never noticed? Hey, hats off to you for not seeing race. All right then, Jim. Uh, why don't you tell me about that sale that you made yesterday? Uh, Wellington Systems sold them 10 cases of 24 pound letter stock. Or were you talking about Krieger Murphy because I didn't close that one yet, but I'm hoping I've got a voicemail from Paul Krieger waiting for me. Please enter your password. You have one new message. How did you? No, 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 no. That is sensitive information only for employees, not outsiders. Dwight, cut it out. I'm trying to work. You don't work here. You're not Jim. Jim, I got us that dinner reservation. Greek goes 7.30. Oh, great. Can't wait. Mm. Jim's at the dentist this morning, and Steve is an actor friend of ours. I don't know who you are, but you are not Jim. This is Jim. Hmm. Oh, dude. Oh, uh, how did... <gasps> Where is my desk? That is weird. This is not funny. This is totally unprofessional. Okay, well, you're the one who lost the desk. I didn't lose my desk. Okay, calm down. Where was the last place you saw it? Okay, who moved my desk? I think you should retrace your steps. Okay, I am going to tell Michael and this entire office will be punished. Colder. Warmer. A little warmer. There you go. Ooh, warmer. 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 Cold, cold, cold. Back up. 
Ooh. Ooh, warmer. Hot. Red hot. Hot. Very hot. Dwight Schrute. Hi, Dwight. Um, what sort of discounts are we giving on the 20-pound white bond? Jim, I've given you this information like 20 times. Right now. It's by the ream. Uh, yeah, ream. It is now 9.78. So it's a discount of 7%. Okay, thank you. Got to get back to work. Wash your hands, Kevin. What is this? Happy holidays, Dwight. But do not open it till Christmas. You're so pathetic. How long did this take you? Three hours? Five minutes, actually. I am a black belt in gift wrapping. Yeah, no such thing. They don't give out black belts for things that are stupid. Psh. Well, I hope it was worth it, because I'm going to take it apart in about five minutes. I think it'll take you a little bit longer than that. Really? If I can skin a mule deer in less than 10 minutes, I ought to be able to cut my... Let me tell you, David Wallace is the CEO, but, but he's not hands-on. So the day-to-day -day operations are entirely under your command? Entirely is the perfect way to describe it, Iris. Uh, excuse me, I'm being told by my sound engineer, Steve, that uh, there is a clinking sound coming from your end. Does your shirt have buttons? Yes. I'm so sorry, we are going to have to ask you to remove the shirt altogether. Now then, we were saying, when my workers oh, I'm gather... I'm so sorry. I am told we are still having problems, Mr. Schrute. Your voice, it's sounding a little feminine. That's impossible. Are you by any chance wearing pants with a metallic zipper? Okay, how is my voice now? I'm getting the all clear from Steve. So, Mr. Schrute, what is your response to the Consumer Product Safety Commission that says Dunder Mifflin paper is toxic? This is gotcha journalism, but you know what? They're not gonna gotch me. It's clearly not an accounting mistake. Oh, so. Kevin, this gambling problem must have resurfaced. I'm gonna have to send him home until I can do an investigation. No, you gotta do what you gotta do, so. This is slander, Ms. Black. Slander, I say. I dare you to produce one credible source about this. Well, as it happens, we have with us the foreman of your upstate New York paper mill, Sandra Mick. Sandra Mick. Good afternoon, Iris. It's a pleasure. I'll get straight to the point. Is your paper toxic? No, the paper's not toxic. Thank you, Sandra. Unless it's exposed to oxygen. Then it becomes extremely toxic. Do not listen to her. This employee is obviously disgruntled. What the heck is going on? The stock price listen, is plummeting. The, are you going to get control of the message, or do I have to send in someone who understands the meaning? Get out of here, moron. Hey. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Dwight. Who are you talking to? Uh, no one. Did you just call Miss Mick a moron? No, everything's fine. Are you insulting my guests? <sighs> Dunder Mifflin's share prices fell 73%. Mr. Schrute, shareholders demand accountability from corporate leadership. Can we announce your resignation at this time? My resignation? What are you talking about? No, I'm just following orders. Listen, the person responsible for this catastrophe is the CEO and chairman, David Wallace. For those just joining us, terror in Greenwich, where the police have surrounded the house of Dunder Mifflin's CEO, David Wallace. Wallace is said to be despondent over the company's stock plummet and has taken a mailman hostage. On the line, we have Chief of Greenwich Police, Mr. Bill Jackson. Good afternoon. Please, sir, spare him. Please. Uh, this Wallace guy is looking at hard time, and we only know this because of what Dwight Snoot said on record. Okay, everyone, everyone, hold on. I've got a solution. I know Wallace's phone number. Everyone hold, I'll conference him in. Oh no, Mr. Schrute, there's really no need to um, involve Mr. Hello? David, is that you? Dwight? Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. Are you okay? Hey, is everyone okay? Yeah. Are you okay? Oh, well, I'm okay. I just want you to know that I believe in you. I really do. And I believe in your ability to make the right choices. I always have, David. Well, thanks, Dwight. You're welcome, sir. But David, listen to me carefully. 
I'm going to need you to let the mailman go. Okay? Wait. Walk out of the house what? with your hands on top of your head. Everything is going to be fine. Dunder Mifflin will be in good hands while you're away in prison. Okay, Dwight, going to ask you to not call me on my cell anymore. Got to go. Wait a minute. You guys, you heard? Overall, I'd say my first radio interview went pretty much the way I expected. What's going on? What are you talking about? Where's my freaking phone? You know what? Maybe it's in the ceiling. You know what? Maybe you're in the ceiling. Okay. I don't trust you, Phyllis. Excuse me. And I'm also sorry that a lot of people here for some reason, think it's funny to steal someone's personal property and hide it from them. Here's a little news flash. It's not funny. In fact, it's pretty freaking unfunny. That was an overreaction. Gonna hit the break room. Does anybody want anything? Ma'am, you good? Yeah. Sure. Okay. As a manager, I felt I couldn't do that. Ron, please don't make it a habit. I'm afraid I'm going to. Damn it! Damn. Okay. Uh, hold on, hold on. Judge is in session. What is the problem here? You put my stuff in jello again. <laughs> That's real professional. Thanks. This is the third time, and it wasn't funny the first all two right, times I did, right. Jim. It's okay here. Uh, but people sometimes take advantage because it's so relaxed. I'm a volunteer sheriff's deputy on the weekends. And you cannot screw around there. That's sort of one of the rules. What is that? That's my staple. No, 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 no! Do not take it out. You have to eat it out of there. Because there are starving people in the world, and which I hate, and it is a waste of that kind of Okay, food. you know what? You can be a witness. Can you reprimand him, please? How do you know it was me? It's always you. Are you going to discipline him or not? Ooh, discipline. Kinky. <laughs> All right, here's the deal, you guys. The thing about a practical joke is that you have to know when to start as well as when to stop. Yeah. And yeah, and Jim, now is the time to stop putting Dwight's personal effects into Jello. <clears throat> okay, Dwight, I'm sorry because I've always been your biggest flan. <laughs> Dude, that's the way it is around here. It just kind of goes around and around. You, uh, around. you should have put him in custody. Oh, hey, hey, yes, new guy. <laughs> and he scores.